Hello, Prog Engineering is back with new appendix. This time we will be talking about the VFC guns and the conversion for Gen 3. Because Gen 3 came out some time ago, already there are some Frog Engineering guns on Gen 3 running, but the manual which I recorded was based on Gen 2, which is a tiny bit different and actually you need to do some additional stuff to make it run nicely in Gen 3, which was never published. So I'm not gonna record the whole manual for the assembly over again, because it will take a lot of time and it's kind of pointless. I will just record the frog appendix, I will show the difference. It will be linked in the main video, uh, somebody watching it should have the access and notice it. The conversion is exactly the same as for Gen 2, yeah, it fits all sizes, let's say. To understand where the difference is, the best would be to have a look on Gen 3 and understand uh, how it differs from Gen 2 and then we will know how this applies to our conversion. So for this reason we will compare two guns. This is an M4 lower Gen 3, this is an HK416 and A5 Gen 2 lower and this is the one you probably know. This is my old and faithful uh, rifle, it uh, lasts for like 50k shots already and it's still going strong, so everything's fine with it. And where is the difference? You see, there is a lot of things going on here. Actually, this is a conversion, uh, the silver part, this is the first prototype uh, that was built, so it looks pretty different and, let's say, ugly, but uh, this is not interesting for us at the moment. Let's concentrate on the valve knocker area. So you see that in the Gen 2 I have this lever here, and the valve knocker looks a bit different, and in Gen 3, uh, it's far less components here and the valve knocker is the silver part in there. Yeah? What this thing does is when you shoot you can see that when the hammer moves back a valve knocker stays in place and only after bolt carrier group pushes on this lever uh, valve knocker moves back. Yeah? This behavior is not present in Gen 3 so if I pull the trigger here you see that uh, the valve knocker moves back together with the hammer, yeah? So all the travel they do, let's say, together and then a uh, hammer is caught on the disconnector. This is the main difference that in the case of Gen 2, valve is valve in the conversion or the magazine, uh, if you have the green gas version, is open longer because uh, the valve knocker is holded in place for some time until the bolt carrier group pushes on this lever, which is one fourth of the travel. You can see it in one of my videos where I explain it. However, in Gen 3, a valve knocker is closing all the time when the gun is being reloaded, meaning it cuts off air supply sooner. And for this reason, if you connect the HPA to the Gen 3 and you don't do any additional modifications, you will do, let's say, exactly the same as in Gen 2, you will notice that you have much weaker kick and much slower rate of fire. So I'll show you how to improve this performance with some valve modification and I'll show you also how to assemble the conversion to this new area which is a tiny bit different than in the original Gen 2. Uh, for this I don't need the Gen 2 anymore, I will put it aside. And we will need to take this apart and to do it the process is very similar to the original uh, Gen 2. Yeah, so we remove the bolt catch remove the spring. Here uh, we also need to remove the mag catch, yeah, because in Gen 2 it was not necessary, in Gen 3 it will be. So basically you press the mag catch in and then you rotate it like I did, yeah. And then I can remove the same screw I had in Gen 2. Now I can remove the assembly of the valve knocker, but this will be a little hard because it's, let's say, press fitted, so I need to push it out from the bottom with something. Yeah, and this is the part in my hand. So you see that here the mag catch was going through, preventing us from taking it out. Yeah, so I'll put it down. And of course, this part has to be modified because here there is normally the attachment point for the conversion. Yeah, so the conversion fits like this. Yeah, and I will need to drill a hole here. However, because this is a different part, it's manufactured differently. If you look this way, this is actually flat. Yeah, so. At, uh, in Gen 2 this was, let's say, tilted and I needed to file it off to be flat so that when I put my conversion on it would not be like this, yeah, it would be straight. 
and here I don't need to do it. I just need to drill the hole, thread it, M2.5 thread, exactly the same method as I used in the original video. I will not repeat it, I will just do it off screen, I will have it ready. So remember here you don't need to file anything, this is proper orientation of the surface already. I have my part with drilled hole, threaded, the usual method, nothing fancy and I filed off some debris but generally this surface, this, this front surface of that part was not changed. If you want you can also remove these two screws here, take it apart, drill only in one part but if you tape it off it's good enough and no debris will fly in. Um, I don't see really reason to take it apart. So if I have it ready I will explain now what to do with the valve. You can imagine that in the gun the valve is like this and when the hammer strikes the valve knocker it pushes the valve, yeah? So this is how it works. And in the gun, if you have a look, there is a big gap between the hammer and the valve. Obviously, if the valve would be longer, then the hammer would strike it earlier, and when moving back, would release it later, yeah? So what we will do is we will make this part of valve a bit longer uh, to allow it uh, to release more air. So how do we disassemble the valve? And you can do it on the VFC valves, uh, many different valves are built differently, but the idea is pretty much the same. Rear part of the valve is attached to the front part here, of this main rod, let's call it, and this is two parts, yeah? So you can take them apart actually and remove them from the valve, yeah? I'll show you now how do you do it. First we will take a piece of tape, I'm gonna push the valve in, and I'm gonna tape off this part, like this and I'm gonna hold this rod where the seal is with some clamps, yeah? And then I will put a thin hex key into the hole here and I can basically rotate it, yeah? And these two parts are screwed together. So if I hold one, I rotate the other counterclockwise, I will basically take this apart. There is some Loctite kind of glue used, some thread locker, so it will be a little hard at the beginning, but uh, you can easily do it, yeah? So. And I did it, so you can see I have my part out, I will take this out, I can take it out also of my tape. And if you worry about uh, damaging this seal here, I can show you that this risk is kind of small. Because you see that this seal seals not with the rear part, but with the front part, yeah? So if I clamp this metal here, which is wider, have bigger diameter than the seal, uh, then nothing will happen, yeah? Anyway, the seal works on this side, not on this side, yeah? When it seals here, so even if you scratch that, that rod, it will not cause any issues. And you can remove the rod, there is also a spring in there, you can also pull it out. And that's how you open this valve. So if you need to clean it because it jams or whatever, you can do exactly the same and it will be fine. But we are interested in this particular part, and depending if this is the new valve or some older one, it could be a tiny bit different. In the old valves, this part is uh, not there. So I have this smaller diameter than the bigger and that's it. Yeah? On my part, it's a bit longer with small di smaller diameter here. And this is basically the guide for the spring. And what I want to do is I want to modify this part to allow this bigger travel. And I want to file off one millimeter of this side of the part one millimeter and this will allow because maybe I did not mention it when the valve uh, the valve knocker is also pushing on it actually this is a hard stop in the valve so it moves to some distance yeah and then the valve cannot push it more and it could because the tolerances in VFC are done this way but actually if there would not be that hard stop it would move a little more inside yeah so in these old valves they had it shorter or actually they had this section completely removed and uh, you get higher rate of fire in the old version of the guns because of it yeah because the valve opens more but uh, it's not a problem I will remove one millimeter here this will be very quick with a Dremel tool and I'm right back so my part is shortened it's 5.5 millimeters on this side previously it was 6.5 I added the chamfer so that it doesn't catch on the spring when I assemble it I cleaned it up, you know, everything is fine. Okay, so first I will drop this in, it goes out on this side, I will drop the spring in, and here I need to apply some thread locking. Okay, and then I can put the part back in, 
and I need to screw it into position and uh, this time because I want to cancel this gap between the valve knocker and the silver part I want this tip to stick out seven millimeters so I'm gonna check where the seven millimeters are okay more or less and I'm gonna screw it and in my case it kind of goes nice with screwing by hand but of course if uh, you have some trouble you can use the exact opposite method to what I showed so push it in grab it here through something some tape or something then use this tiny hex key and you know rotate it in yeah I think I reached my seven millimeters obviously you don't want to use a permanent thread locking because you might in future need to open the valve to clean it uh, if you ask about the longevity of these valves honestly I don't know mine runs for like 50,000 rounds without any cleaning just spraying silicone once in I don't know five ten thousand rounds in the conversion in here to you know loop these seals and so on um, so it probably it depends yeah uh, if you will be in some extremely sandy environment probably it will jam sooner and yeah the valve is ready regarding this dimension from my practice it's uh, seven millimeters that you can allow yourself to to elongate this valve here uh, but uh, of course you will see so when you assemble it into the gun and you take some first shots you will see if the valve completely closes yeah if you notice that there is some hissing because of the uh, valve being opened by the valve knocker maybe it's you know too long so just make one more turn or whatever to you need to make this dimension fit to your gun from my practice again this is seven millimeters and uh, depending on the tolerances it could be a bit more a bit less okay and this modified valve goes standard way into the conversion and i'll switch to the next step with this part prepared and the conversion with modified valve ready we can go back to our original assembly and here quite simply we'll drop this back in and we will screw it in place the usual way and with the part in place we can start to mark where we need to put the second hole uh, but here there will be just one small tiny modification so in the kit you have this kind of washer yeah and this washer shall be placed in here like this the reason why we have this washer is that right now when this face where you drill the hole in that firing pin retainer is let's say flat the conversion actually sits a bit more to the back it doesn't have the impact on the function but there is a huge wobble back and forth on the magazine because there is too much space in the front so there is this kind of washer you can put it in here it will push out the conversion to such a distance that the magazine will sit nicely if you don't feel like you need it then you don't need to put it in but for this step when you need to mark where the hole will be here it's good to have it so you mark the hole properly anyway like we go to the middle of the slot and uh, to, we mark a line so that we have the middle of the rib yeah so I marked my line and of course I take the middle of it and I will drill uh, here to make the second assembly point exactly same way as I did it in the original video so with this hole ready I need to take my conversion and my shim put the shim here in between and put the screw in and as always leave it a little loose then take the second screw and screw it in okay leave it a little loose and then the usual way you need to put in the magazine and screw the conversion in place if the magazine after you screw those screws uh, will be too tight you can just remove this orange part and this will increase the clearance obviously yeah so i tighten it down and yeah my magazine fits nicely everything is brand new so it requires some breaking in as usual uh, but uh, yeah this fits so this was the last thing regarding the uh, functionality uh, this way the gun will perform correctly but i will do one more modification on this mag catch i actually mentioned it in my previous videos that sometimes um, you are not able to insert the mag because it collides with the mag catch it has too small guiding on this side so i will file it off with the dremel and i will just show you the result it will be very quick and here i have it filed uh, make sure that there are no sharp edges obviously the idea is that this chamfer i added will slide over the magazine yeah 
very easy. And then I can assemble it back. And after screwing on this button with the spring, you see that I can insert the mark with no issue. Okay, and that, these are all the differences in the Gen 3, what you need to do. I could finish right now, but I'll do one last thing later. Uh, when the gun is fully assembled, I will show you how it shoots uh, with this modification, so that you can compare if you need it or not, I mean the valve and so on, yeah? So, let's be back in a moment. And here is our guy. It has a steel bolt carrier group in stock, that's nice. I'll give it some pressure. Remember, put gun on safe, meaning that it's reloaded. And let's feel this strength of stick. Yeah, so all is okay. Uh, I don't have a gun for comparison which doesn't have these modifications, but it would be really, really weak. Even if I push the bolt catch right now, yeah, it easily catches the slide. And without this modification, it could be kind of problematic. Yeah? If I put the mag in, it's the same. Yeah, so. If you have these problems with Gen 3 that the kick is too small, then you know now what to do. And that's all for this episode of Frog Appendix. This was an appendix to the manual of assembly of HK416 and AR15 type of guns from VFC in the third generation. As a reminder, we modified the valve to increase the kick and the speed how the boat travels. We also inserted this uh, new shim in between the conversion and the body and the valve knocker retainer. Obviously we modified the valve knocker retainer a bit and we filed the mic catch. So these are all the modifications that are applicable for the Gen 3 and with them your Gen 3 will work just as good as the Gen 2 were working. So thank you for your time, comment what you think, leave like, subscribe, hit the notification bell there will be more videos coming, obviously. And the next topic is the new hot release that everybody is waiting for so long, so don't miss it. Thank you again, and may the power of GBBR be with you.